Welcome back to Lecture 4. In this part of Lecture 4, we're going to look at four mini-examples that concern finding non-dimensional groups. And what I'd like to try and show you is how to develop an intuition for what non-dimensional groups apply to which problem. So, we're going to cover a rigorous way to derive non-dimensional groups from first principles in the final part of this lecture. But if you compare that technique to what we're going to talk about now, you will see that it is far better to start learning to recognise groups by looking at the physics of a problem. And remember, page 35 of your data book gives you lots of different chemical engineering groups that will apply to almost all the problems you're trying to solve. So, let's start off by looking at mini-example one. So here on the whiteboard, I've got a problem description for you. We have a fluid flowing through a pipe, our fluid takes a density and a viscosity, the pipe takes a diameter d, and the fluid flows at a velocity u. And let's say what we want to do is find the non-dimensional group for this situation. The first piece of advice I would give you is draw a diagram. So here on the whiteboard is a diagram of the problem. There's our pipe shown in brown, it has a diameter d, there's the fluid, the velocity u, and the velocity taking of a density and a viscosity, rho and u, respectively. Now, this is a typical, simple fluid mechanics problem. What I would like you to do is to start to recognise a particular dimensionless group with fluid mechanics problems like this. Whenever you have a flow of a fluid, and if you have a density and a viscosity, and a given length scale, and a given velocity, or can find a given velocity, you should think Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is the ratio of inertial stress to viscous stress. You've seen from your fluid dynamics course that the value of the Reynolds number, whether it's over 1500 or under 1500, will tell you whether the flow is turbulent, a high Reynolds number, or laminar, a low Reynolds number. Inertially dominant flows give you turbulence, viscous dominated flows give you a laminar flow. And so if we look at this problem, we will see that we have all the information we need to form a Reynolds number. So there we go. Fluid mechanics problems, you should first of all always think, can I form a ratio of inertial and viscous stress? Can I form a Reynolds number? Okay. Mini example number two is going to be along very similar lines. We still have our pipe. We still have our fluid flowing through our pipe. All that we've changed is the way in which we measure how much fluid. This time we have a volumetric flow rate, Q. Now, before you dive into the problem and start thinking, well, Q, I need to find a dimensionless group involving Q, and look in your data book, and finding that the only Q there looks like a heat flux, I want you to think. Draw a diagram. There's a diagram of our problem. It looks very similar to the last diagram, except that we've just replaced U, the velocity, by Q, the volumetric flow rate. Ask yourself this. Has the physics changed? I hope that you will think that, no, actually, the physics hasn't changed. All that's changed is how we're measuring the quantity of fluid. So therefore, if the physics hasn't changed, Reynolds number is still going to be an important group for this problem. So the question you should be asking yourself is, well, I know from intuition, from engineering sense, that, I, that this problem has a Reynolds number associated with it. I haven't got a velocity. How do I get a velocity? And we can see that we've got a volumetric flow rate, we've got a pipe diameter, and so using the pipe diameter we can get a cross-sectional area, and if we divide volumetric flow rate by cross-sectional area, we of course get a velocity. So, rather than deriving from first principles a new dimensionless group that will look a little bit like Reynolds number, recognise that the physics has not changed from the previous example. A Reynolds number is going to be important here. We just need to find how to formulate it. And if we think of volumetric flow and pipe area, we can see that a velocity naturally drops out of that. So, I've written there on the whiteboard in the red box a modified Reynolds number, Reynolds hat. It's a modified Reynolds number because I've dropped the numerical values out. I've omitted the 4 over pi. If you look on page 35 of your data book, you will see that very few, if any, dimensionless groups will have numerical values in them. All we're concerned about is, do the units cancel each other out? And so Reynolds hat here is different from Reynolds because the absolute values, the numbers that you calculate with it, are going to be different by that 4 over pi factor, which means 
that the laminar turbulent transition for Reynolds hat isn't going to be 1500. It's going to be something else. That ratio of 4 over pi is going to come in. So, I've still got a Reynolds number. It's a modified Reynolds number. It's just written in terms of a volumetric flow rate, and it's now rho q over mu d. So recognising that the physics is the same allows us to very quickly arrive a dimensional, at a dimensionless group that you won't find on page 35 of your data book written in that way. Let's build on our pipe example. We've still got our fluid flowing through a pipe. Our fluid still has a density and viscosity, rho and mu. This time, however, our pipe has a length associated with it, a length L. And across that pipe length, we want to measure the pressure, or the pressure difference. So, draw a diagram. Here's my diagram, there's my pipe. It now has a length associated with it, and I now have a pressure driving the fluid through it. Let's find the dimensionless groups. We've still got fluid flowing through a pipe. The Reynolds number, therefore, is still going to be an important dimensionless group. So let's write down the Reynolds number first of all. If we look at this problem a little more closely, we can see that we've got two different length scales. We've got a diameter and we've got a length. If we divide one by the other, that's dimensionless. So L over D, aspect ratio. These geometric ratios become very important in determining something called geometric similarity. We'll explore that in a future lecture. We need one more dimensionless group because we want to find something about pressure and we haven't got pressure in any of these dimensionless groups. Don't forget that trick with the Bernoulli equation. So there's the Bernoulli equation, P plus half rho u squared plus rho gh. I'm going to divide P by rho u squared because I don't have either g or a height involved in this problem. So P over rho u squared drops neatly out of Bernoulli and is of course dimensionless. So there we have it, three dimensionless groups for this particular problem. For our final example, let's look at a slightly different fluid mechanics scenario. Let's say I now have a beaker of liquid. That liquid has a density and viscosity, rho L, mu L. I'm going to get a particle with a solid density rho S and a diameter dS. And I'm going to drop that particle in the liquid and watch it fall. So, let's find the non-dimensional groups for this particular problem. Again, start with your diagram. There's my beaker of yellow liquid with my purple particle. And I have just released that particle and I'm watching it accelerate to its terminal velocity. So, it's a fluid mechanics problem. I can have the flow around this particle be either laminar or turbulent depending how fast it's falling. If I look at the parameters of the problem, I've got viscosities, I've got densities, I've got a length scale, and I've got a velocity. So, fine, I can form a Reynolds number, as before. That is my first dimensionless group. I've written the Reynolds number now with respect to the liquid density, because we've got two densities to choose from. Now, let's have a look at this problem a little more closely. What are the key physical processes happening here? Well, I'm converting potential to kinetic energy, aren't I? The particle is a certain distance above the height of the beaker. I'm dropping it, it falls. Potential to kinetic energy. Therefore, the Froud number has to be involved. So there, I've written my Froud number as u over root g ds. Now, those eagle-eyed individuals amongst you will go, well, hang on a minute, ds is the sphere diameter, not the height through which it's falling. Surely we should be using the height here if we're actually getting a measure of that potential to kinetic energy transfer. And you're absolutely right. However, the point is, is that we have a length scale ds, we have acceleration due to gravity g, so we can form this group. It's just the interpretation of what it means shifts a little bit. But it's still effectively kinetic and potential energy. We've got another group we can find here. If we look at this problem, we have another material property ratio. We have rho s over rho l. So don't overlook the simplest groups to form of all, ratios of parameters having the same units. So there we have it, three dimensionless groups for this particular problem found very straightforwardly. Let's recap a few key points. The key point that I want to try and get across is learn to recognise which groups are associated with which problems and what they physically mean. The more you can develop that insight, the quicker you can get not only your dimensionless groups formed, 
but also your mental model around what's actually important in the problem. The Reynolds number is a very common group in fluid mechanics problems, so look for it if you have a fluid mechanics problem. The Froude number is another common dimensionless group when you have kinetic energy to potential energy transfer. Again, look for it if you've got things rising or things falling. Don't forget very easy to form groups. Ratios of lengths, ratios of densities, ratios of viscosities, and so on and so forth. If you've got a problem involving pressure, don't forget that trick with the Bernoulli equation. Divide the pressure term by one of the other terms in Bernoulli, either rho u squared or rho gh, and you will get a dimensionless group involving pressure.